Okay. So, uh, I spoke and uh, done in the PhD and master. Let's look at the content. So, first I'll give you a brief about the uh, Then I'll introduce the concept of the content. Then how to fix is how to fix the uh, transition in including the then we explore the uh, electrically driven transmissions uh, transition system uh, prepared HS2. And then I'll come to the Alright, so first uh, the PC transition let me write out the right? one a metal sheet is uh, sandwiched between two uh, charcoal density separator forming a EMB monolayer and each layer is Out of all these TMB, two third of these TMB are prepared from group four to group seven, and uh, these uh, host a wide variety of properties, including the insulated MOS2, semiconductor MOS2, and the slick WP2 metallic MBS2. So, the absorption of the behavior of these materials usually arises. Forces in each one. Out of all these materials, uh, the, the half fill D brand dietary it, especially the PS2, PS2, exhibits unique charge density. What are these charge density waves? Uh, these correspond to the modulation of the reduction of density with respect to the atomic density. So they impart unique features. Understand the charge density waves uh, by considering the one dimensional method of the half speed band without any explicit one interactions. Here, if you see the state of the concentration of energy is near, and in the following way, uh, the states are filled and the states are filled in the Now, if we consider the electrons in one direction, which would result in the opening of the gap at the point of the color. This state C EF was filled, so the opening of the gap reduced the total electronic energy of the system. So, if we decrease the gap of the gap, increase in the elastic.
the low temperature C phase is uh, uh, is kind of represented here by a triangular super lattice, which is formed by these David star structures. So these David star structures are formed uh, by the inward displacement of 12 tantalum atoms at the location B and C towards the 13th tantalum atom as the center of the star. So these uh, these atomic displacement or the shrinkages in the AB, BZ, AB and BC bond length results in the swelling at the cen uh, center of the star. So this bond length shrinkages actually results in the disintegration of band structure of TES2 into various sub-manifolds, wherein the 12 tantalum atoms which were arranged at the corners of the stars contribute to the uh, sub-manifolds in the valence band, whereas the 13th tantalum atom which was located at the center of the star contributes to the electron in the conduction band. Now the on-site Coulomb in, uh, repulsion between the electrons in a very small band at the Fermi level further localize the electron and it will result in a mott hubbard transition. So this is the reason why we have a very high resistivity of TES2 at low temperature. So the serial of blue phase transition interestingly uh, can also be invoked uh, by current induced joule heating. So the NCIC phase transition that uh, happens at around 353 Kelvin can be obtained or induced at room temperature by simply applying a high bias across it. So the, we apply a high bias across a TES2 device and what we found that we see a, a current in, abrupt current increment which is around a factor of around 1.5 and which is similar to that of the NCIC phase transition. So this is further confirmed by the simulated temperature profile across the uh, TES2 channel, which we did using FEM. And uh, what we found that after the bias is increased from 1.8 to 2, the temperature in the middle of the channel is sufficient to induce the NCIC phase transition, which is above the 350 Kelvin. All right. So the, however, even though it is very interesting that we can induce these transition at electrically, there's a bottleneck to it. Uh, the switching ratio is very small, which is around 1.5, and also we cannot gate control it since it's a very highly conducting material. So what we propose here, uh, we propose a new architecture, a uh, new device where we could achieve a high current switching in this triple layered heterostructure where MOS2 is at the bottom followed by a dry transfer of TESE2 and a TES2. So the idea is to, uh, whenever the abrupt change in the TES2 uh, current happens, that will result in the abrupt change in the temperature, junction temperature, which will induce the th uh, like uh, kind of thermionic carriers into the MOS2 and which eventually modulate the MOS2 current. All right, so this is the 3D schematics of the device. To do that, first we do that uh, we try to achieve NCIC phase transition in this uh, TES2 and SE2 branch. So we apply a high bias and we could achieve it and the factor was somewhere around 1.5. So which means that TES2 carries ample amount of current to derive the NCIC phase transition of TAS2. All right. So in this, uh, the first thing is that why we use TESE2, uh, there are uh, multiple reasons. One which I just stated that we need ample amount of like current to drive the NCIC phase transition in TES2. Secondly, uh, the low thermal conductivity of TES2 in comparison to gold helps further helps in actually increasing the local temperature of the channel, which will further help in the thermionic uh, transport. Also, this TAS2 acts as a buffer layer between TAS2 and MOS2, which will prevent the uh, short key barrier modulation at TAS2 MOS2 interface, which usually happens with the uh, simultaneously with the phase transition. So it kind of acts as a buffer so that we don't see the effect of uh, uh, short key barrier modulation due to the phase transitions of TAS2. So this is the uh, equivalent circuit of the four probe device where R1 contribute, uh, uh, R1 represents the resistance of TES2, R2 represents the resistance of TES2 and MOS2 represent, uh, R3 represents the resistance of MOS2 branch. 
so there there is an external fourth terminal which is the uh, universal uh, back gate so what we what the idea is to apply a high bias across tesc2 and tes2 terminal and while simultaneously monitor the mos2 current even though we were looking for increment but what we found that when we apply a bias across tesc2 uh, the <laughs> Uh, I mean, enough high bias which can induce the threshold, uh, which could actually cross the threshold for the TES to NCIC phase transition. It will abruptly increase the current in the TES to branch and simultaneously reduce the current in the MOS to branch, which will contribute to NDR in the MOS uh, our current characteristics. So this is for both TES to and MOS to injection. And uh, we see NDR in both the sites, and we extracted the PVCR. So we could achieve a PVCR of about 1.12 modulated through the gate voltage because of the modulation of MOS2 resistance by the back gate voltage. And this is the PVCR that could we could obtain at room temperature. So even uh, so, to a simplistic way to further improve this PVCR is to induce the low temperature phase transitions of TES2. So we perform all these measurements at 150 Kelvin. So the current ratio increased to 1.7. And we could increase the PVCR at 150 Kelvin to about 1.27, which was better than the room temperature values. Now, interestingly, if we change the biasing conditions and we bias, apply the bias as TAS2 instead of TASE2, we saw a current increment. So here, the only difference is that when, when we apply high bias, the TES2 current changes abruptly, and it will simultaneously increase the current in the MOS2, because now the total current is going through R2 instead of R1. So we got this current increment factor as I as 1.5 at room temperature. To further increase this, we again perform low temperature measurements where we try to invoke the low temperature C to T transition of TES2 through the external electric field. And we could, increase, uh, we could achieve a current increment factor of around 4 at 150 Kelvin. So this current increment factor cannot be solely achieved by the TES2 phase transition because at 150 Kelvin, it was limited to 1.7. So there's another mechanism that is happening, and that could probably explain why we see a, such a, a high current increment factor. So to understand that, let's see a simplistic mechanism, uh, schematics to understand the mechanism of uh, thermionic injection in this case. So this is the situation before the transition, and this is the situation after the transitions. So what happened that when you the TES2 transition happens, there is a suddenly increase in the current, but at the same time, there will be a local increase in the temperature because of the uh, current-induced joule heating, which will further ignite these, uh, transfer the kinetic energy to the carriers, and they can easily uh, cross the thermionic barrier at the TESC2 MOS2 interface. To further explore this, uh, what we did that we designed a new device where we have reduced the MOS2 channel to, uh, uh, we devised a new device with, we designed a new device where we have a very narrow MOS2 channel and the junction overlap area is reduced. So what we are essentially doing that we are trying to pass the very high hot electrons through a very small region, which further helps in uh, increasing the local temperature and which kind of acts as a local heater. So here we could able to achieve two times current enhancement at room temperature. And then at low temperature, we could see a current enhancement by a factor of three, almost three orders of magnitude. So uh, this is the current enhancement factor variation as a function of temperature. So we see that as we keep on lowering the temperature, base temperature, the current enhancement factor uh, almost reaches, uh, changes to a fact almost by three orders of magnitude. This is because we are trying to invoke the low temperature uh, metastable states or C2T states of TAS2. So uh, here, if you see, there is a very uh, strong non-monotonic behavior in the current increment factor as a function of Vg. This, this can be explained by these 
pan diagrams so what we uh, so each for each region noted here especially for, for this is for vt greater than 0 that is mos2 injection and this green line shows the for the vt less than 0 that is like for ts2 injection so first i'll talk about mos2 injection here and uh, uh, for vg very less than 0 which is around somewhere here so the electrons can easily transfer through they don't see any barrier and they can easily jump into tac2 for VG almost equals to zero, which is region B, they see a thermionic barrier and we see a very high sensitivity towards the uh, current uh, and there is a high current jump as well. So what we do, we do try to simulate the temperature at this point and what we found that uh, the, for a base temperature of 77 Kelvin, we could actually achieve the at a certain very high bias, the temperature of the channel could reach as high as 230 Kelvin. So Further, we try to simulate certain current ratios for a variable uh, barrier height at the TAC to MOS2 interface. And what we found that uh, from 120 to 240 Kelvin, with respect, we find these current ratios for these temperatures with respect to the 77 Kelvin base temperature. And we found that these, we can have the current ratios as high as 10 to power 4, which kind of justifies the high current ratio at this region. Next in region C for VG much greater than zero, there is a band binding increases and the electrons can simply tunnel through. So the, uh, the, now the transport is generally dominated by tunneling and we have a low current jump because it is not further controlled by the thermionic barrier. Right. For TES2 injection, similarly, we see that for VG much less than zero, uh, there is a barrier and then there is a high current jump because then it is sensitive to the local temperature. And similarly, for VG greater than zero, there's a tunneling happening and your current increment factor kind of reduces. So to conclude, uh, uh, we show here today the current switching ratio up to 964, up to a factor of 964 driven by a CDW phase transition and which is almost 190 times uh, higher than the existing reports. Also, uh, we show a very highly reconfigurable device that can easily toggle between the NDR as well as the current increment by simply changing the biasing conditions. Additionally, this gate tunability, which comes because of the MOS2 uh, modulation of MOS2 resistance with the back gate voltage, this can be useful for various sensing applications such as the current and temperature sensors. And further, it can find potential application in various oscillators, switching circuits, and neuromorphic chips. So I want to thank my PhD advisor at uh, IC Bangalore, Kaushik Majumda, and my lab mates at QEL. Also, I want to thank all the funding agencies. And thank you. We have time for some questions. So it's uh, microscopic, I mean like uh, at structure level if I see, then there is a super lattice formation, the triangular super lattice, then there is, which is resulting from David star formation. So when you try to apply a high field, those stars break up and then your kind of resistance is going down. So you have a high current jump. So I hope that answers. Sorry. No, it depends upon how much you can drive the local temperature. So you can break, uh, like if I'm at say room temperature or which regime you are operating. Like if I'm at a base temperature of 77 Kelvin and if I'm reaching around uh, by just through external bias, I'm trying to reach the local temperature by say, by simulated results, which I've shown that 230 Kelvin, which means that it have already crossed the C to T's transition. So it kind of breaks the whole system. So it depends upon which temperature you are reaching, but de purely depends upon the bias or field you are applying. Yes. No, I, uh, we did the stability measurements, even like for certain devices, even after one year of usage, they show this kind of I mean, just no any fancy uh, kind of storage, just uh, kept in a desiccator. So it did uh, replicate the same current after one year also. Yeah, 
speaker once again.